Don't be a flake. Don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't hesitate to say, hey, babe. 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 Nakila. Hey, babe. Nakila. Hey, babe. Nakila. Hey, babe. What's up, buddy? How you doing, babe? Good, man. What's uh, what's going on with your eyes? Yeah, I, 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 I got cream in them. What? Uh, uh Dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I put like a. I got this. I had this Burt's Bees. Okay. Uh, little, little, like you know, just a moisturizer. Yeah. Sometimes I get dry, you know, you and I like to, I like to tend to it. I like to ignore it. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got the solution for you. You ready for this? I. Because because from looking at my phone so much and a lot of people I'm sure suffer from this looking at computer looking at cell phone your eyes get so dried out I got these drops they're fake tears they're actual fake tears because your tear ducts dry out and then you put that in no. and it, and it, I can't do that what what do you mean can't I can't put I've never been able in my entire life to put a not one drop has ever hit my eyeballs I can't what do you mean I have a terrible OCD um, you see my see my right eye right there has a big red Mark in yes, it. yes. I this is a I sustained an injury at the hands of my sister. What happened? She hit me in the face with a Malibu Ken doll, as in Ken and Barbie Mattel. Right. Yeah. It was like when we were younger. Shout uh, out Mattel, Doug and Melissa. Though we like Doug and Melissa. puts puts a little bit of a better product. Doug out there. and Melissa is really doing things yeah. now with children's toys that I haven't seen anyone in the market do for quite some time. Shout out Doug and Melissa. Shout out Doug and Melissa. Toys. Sal and I will be opening up. Uh, Different boxes of children's toys on the Patreon. Yeah, we might do unboxings. That's it. Yeah, we just so you know, there's a lot of plastic going out. Right. But Doug and Melissa really work in just upgraded materials, a lot of woods and and, and yeah. textiles. Right. Much like the creator of Bitcoin, nobody knows who Doug and Melissa actually are, and they don't no. know if they exist or if they're a clandestine conglomerate. That's right. That made the toys. A lot of people think it is Doug Stanhope and Melissa McCarthy. Right. That they they came together and did a, to- a toy right. store, but it's not. It's, it's just not, not true. Yeah. Yeah. It, it could be the CIA. Even we don't even know. Yeah, you don't know who the hell it is. I um, I I did this thing where I put a little cream here, and uh, it I think it got into my eye balls, and now they're just tearing. I, my body's working the way it's supposed to. No, work. But let me ask you a question though. What do you mean you can't? You mean your eye, like you have an anomaly in your eye, like your eye physically will will bounce the drop back? I can't ever wear uh, contact lenses. I can't. Put, no, my eye won't. My eye will not stay open to accommodate the drop. So genuinely, if you had U.S. government secrets, let's say you're the guy that has the government secrets, and you get kidnapped by ISIS, ISIS doesn't have to put you in a cage and threaten to burn you alive. They don't have to say we're going to behead you. All they have to do is say, tell me what your government's hiding. You say no. And then they come out. There's a big, huge terrorist comes out with Vizine. an eye drop thing like this, and he says, now do it. You spill the secrets. It, uh, everything. 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 Literally, if he's like that, you're going to start spilling. You don't understand. I I can't even look at like a a cartoon or a movie or an action movie where someone gets hit in the eye or stabbed in the eye or anything like that. You ever seen Ray Allen? Ray Ray Allen? uh, Ray, I'm sorry, Allen Ray from the University of Connecticut basketball game get his eye poked out in the game? No. Pull it up. No, no, no. Pull it up. Come on. I don't know if I'll be able to watch it. Allen Ray eye poked out. What do you mean he gets his eye? He he gets, does his eye get poked or do you see his eyeball detach or something like that let's take a look uh, if his eyeball is going to detach i won't be able to view that yeah here we go um no it doesn't detach wait where is the this is this is just clips of alan ray this is just alan ray's highlight reel he was a fa- fantastic player not for the are University you of Connecticut. alan ray he played for villanova i are apologize you alan ray? Uh, you, eh, who eh. wants to know who wants to know remember that song yeah alan ray here it is yeah so he gets poked in the eye, and then if you see in slow motion, his eyeball, you see how that white dot pops out? His eyeball gets popped out of its socket, but it doesn't detach. But you see quickly, if you look quickly, you'll see a white mark, boom, right there, hits him right on the noggin. And oh, his- my God. So that would not be good for you. Oh, my God. Now, he's now did he have to retire now, or they fixed him? I think they might have fixed I mean, I think they fixed him. I don't think that – I think – no, he didn't retire. I don't know that – he didn't make the NBA – but he, or he maybe he did make the NBA, but he didn't retire. He didn't retire after. No, he he continued to play. That was that was uh yeah. Where is he playing now? Villanova. He played for Villanova. He might have made the. He's from Brooklyn, New York. Shout out Brooklyn. Shout out. Uh, but that was the worst eye injury I've ever Shout seen. Shout out eye injuries. I I uh, <laughs> I I uh, I yeah. I, I have a. I don't. We never spoke about this. I can't even have things pointing my way. Well, no, I knew that because Massive. I never I never talked to you about yeah. it. But 
you know, quite often through the times we've been doing this podcast, you will you'll push oh, yeah, in a yeah, corner you know of a pillow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over and, more on the road or something. Right. I'll turn turn anything pointing at me. So yeah, nothing can go anywhere near my eye. And when I'm overstimulated, because it I think it has to do with ADHD and OCD and all this stuff, besides the PTSD. A lot of acronyms floating right. around. <laughs> right. But um I, I, I can't even like uh I can't even bring myself when I'm overstimulated, my eyes are hypersensitive. Right. You're gonna laugh at me. Sometimes when I am Flustered, and I feel like I have, uh, you know, sensory overload. Right. Um, I can't even look out of my eyes. Like, I, if no joke, if I want to watch television, uh, like oh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I was so overstimulated, my eyes are bothering me so bad. No right. way to live. I uh, I had to put on sunglasses in the house to watch television. Wow. Because the actual TV screen was too bright for me, and I was sitting downstairs in my own home with yeah. sunglasses on at 10 p.m. watching, like, Bob's Burgers. That's why I have mine on right now. I have the same thing. Are you serious? Really? Are I, you serious? I, I, thought you, I just thought you were a slave to fashion. I am, but no, I get yeah. bad uh, migraines where I lose vision for an hour. There you go. So that's why you've always had those. You never told me about. I've been working with you for two years. You've never told me about. <laughs> I that. just you, thought you were like Willy Wonka's cousin. <laughs> you've been working with Joe DeRosa for two years. You didn't even know how old he was. No, he's like. Yeah, I think he's somewhere between forty and ninety. Do you even know how old I am? Do you even care about me? I'll cut you open and look at your rings right now. <laughs> right now, I got three you're rings. Like thirty six. I'm thirty six years old. August 26, 1984. God bless Good year. you. Yeah. 1984 is a wild year because, I mean, I wrote the Yo, book about 1984. 84 is a banger of a year. It's a big I'm year. I'm also 76. I'm a bicentennial baby. Wow. I got a great year. 84 is is a great year, dude. Yeah. You got Mad that's Madeline's rookie year. That is Don Madeline's rookie year. Yeah. That is Madeline's rookie year. And uh, maybe even Jordan, no, 85? I think Jordan was the 1984 draft. A lot of things yeah. happened in 84. Big yeah. news in 84. What happened? Gandhi was assassinated in 84. There you go. Gandhi was? Gandhi was by, by his two Sikh bodyguards. What? Yep. Gandhi was assassinated in 84. You know, at the end of Gandhi's life, he was hated by most of India. Should, should I reveal that I didn't realize that Gandhi was assassinated now or later? <laughs> I would say do it now. Yeah, I didn't necessarily recall that he was assassinated. You knew he was dead, though. I knew he was dead. I didn't recall it was by, by via assassination. Right. You know, he was but there's a lot of things I know that probably other people... Are, like... How do you think Sam Cook died? I don't even know who Sam Cook is. Well, that's not true. Sam Cook, he's one of the greatest voices of the history of every generation. What's it one he's song got a, a he million sang? hits. Like what's he one died at the age of 33. He was involved in a very mysterious death where he was murdered, I believe. What's yeah. one song he did? I, 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 mean, I mean, one song is even like, where do I even begin? Uh, do you know who Sam Cook is, Pimp? Have you heard of Sam Cooke? I probably only know him from sampled rap music. Uh, no, but you've never fellas, heard of Sam Cooke? He's old, never heard of Sam Cooke. I'm Cook. not old. Sam <laughs> Cooke is, is, Sam Cook is a timeless. Sam Cooke is like saying Ray Charles. Sam Cooke is like saying Otis Redding. You know Otis Redding. I know Ray Charles. I don't know Otis Redding. You know Otis you know, Redding. I know Otis Spunktemeyer. No. The not, cookie. I mean, God bless. Good, great cookies. Yeah. You don't know who Otis. Otis Elevators. You, Otis Elevators. Great I've, heard, I've heard of, what's his name? Otis Redding? Yes. If you, I, I'm being honest, you're blo- you're, if you I, ask I, me to I, guess, I grew my balls back. You're about to blow, blow them off again. I swear to God, if you ask me right now who was Otis Redding, I would think he. I, I my first guess would be he used to play for the Knicks. Holy shit, dude! I mean, I'll give you the layup, Otis Redding. Okay, sitting on the dock of the bay. Can, can you sing it a little bit? No, you kidding me? Sitting on the dock. Do you know sitting, sitting on the dock in of the bay? The Pimp morning doesn't. sun. Oh, yeah. I'll be sitting when the evening comes, comes. watching the ships yeah. roll in. Hey, babe. Then I watch them roll away again. Oh, I'm just sitting mm-hmm. on the dock of Hey, babe. <laughs> watching the tide roll away. <laughs> it's one of the most famous songs in the history of music. I don't. Cook had 30. But that's not even. Otis Redding is. That's. Bush League Otis Redding. Uh, okay. No judgment zone because I love... This is my music. No, soul, soul and funk you, and like early hip-hop is my music. So 
that's what I, I, I th- this is my essence in music is soul music. Do you remember, wait, do you remember, do you remember, I won't say its name, but do you remember <laughs> when we were at that pool in Nashville? And yeah. We, you were at the pool in Nashville and we saw a singer uh. who you were a huge fan of, who you were like a humongous fan of this guy. Yeah. And we saw him and like you had been getting recognized, people, have, you know, knew who you were, he saw it and then you walked up to him and said what a big fan you were and he treated you like it's you couldn't, like he was a about to call security. Security. That man. was I was. Yeah. I, you. We, we were in Nashville. We were on the road. There was this hip new place. Right. It was like called like the like. The it used dive, to be a motel. The dive motel. Or uh, yeah, it was like that. awesome. Though. And what they did was they took the concept of a roadside dive motel. Right. But they made it new and vibrant and trendy. It was awesome. And hip. And they had this old school bar area that looks like a basically a VW post. Right. Oh, is that, did I say that right? A VF, VFW post. VFW post. But your eyes are dry, so. Yeah, my eyes are dry. <laughs> uh, and, 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 it's, and then they did the poolside and it's people with motel rooms but they have this great menu and they have a DJ and they, they it was a great, whoever did that is a visionary. Right. And so we went and we hung out at this daytime pool party great food right. drink vibe atmosphere right and you and i were in the pool together we had a great time and then a, a famous singer let's decide as we go if we want to reveal who it is only because i forgot his i don't name. know if it pays off yeah that, but there's a person now that's like grammy nominated even. yeah and great musician i'm it's my current favorite musician right Still, t- oh, so still, he's your favorite musician he's even after that. Amazing, great, uh, one of my favorites, <laughs> without a doubt. Top five, ten people that I think are doing the most exciting things in music right now. Right, okay, Le- Leon Bridges. Leon Bridges. Okay, that's who it is. Yeah, and I have seen this guy in concert. <laughs> I know every single syllable. It was to so both funny. of his studio albums right. and all of his all of his peripheral s- singles right. with Krungbin and all this right. other stuff. And le- I'm not. Ha- I- I love this man. Yeah. I love this person. I think he's one of the most talented people I've seen in decades. He is. And he ca- he ended up attending this pool party. Yes. And I'm not sure if people just respected his space or didn't necessarily know who he was. Right. Per se. I don't know if he's like an everyday name in every household, but anyone who's hip to anything about music or I trends or fashion or... They know him. I didn't He's know anything. I didn't know anything about his music at all. But he stuck out to he me. He stood out because he the guy is a star. Because how cool he dresses. Uh, he had on a cool hat. He and was a, in these. I think he might have been in like polyester bell bottoms, but like seriously with a, with a tight tank. But he's got the chains and he has a beautiful big rimmed hat. Yeah, no, he was cool as shit. He's he, wearing platform shoes and he was getting down. He was he was dancing to <laughs> no, the band he was next. Getting down, baby, when we're grinding, I, I get, get so excited. excited. Ooh, how you like it? it. Try but, but I can't, can't hide it. Ooh, you're, you're dancing real close. <laughs> getting real low as a poke. You're making it high, babe. And Leon Bridges was dancing to that. Yes. And he was like but, real. He had like he backup was, dancers. No, yeah, he was doing like slides. He was, he was unbelievable. He was great. Yeah. And everybody, like you could tell that he was somebody because he just radiated. He just he just looked cool. He's cool as Yeah, that. he just looked and, awesome. Um, and, he, and he was in his zone. And I, and I caught it and I said, I think that is Leon Bridges, who I think is the preeminent musician no, right now. But why it was so insane that that was Leon Bridges is because an hour before that, when we were on our way to that hotel, you were playing that music and you were talking to your friends and everyone else who was there with us saying how much you guys love Leon Bridges. <laughs> I was like, who is that? And you played him for us in the car. I was like, you have no idea what this guy's doing with music. <laughs> we about to he see him in an hour. He changes his sound with every record and he still gives you the best of that sound. It's unbelievable. Right. And this is a guy... I admire that I've seen in concert, and I, I didn't want to bother him. I'm I I'm in the public eye. Sure. I get it. I get when people sometimes see me, and when I I've I've been in this camp. I've seen people that I admire, and I'm like, well, I may never see this person again. This is my chance to at least tell them what they mean to me, possibly. Yeah. Um, from being in that position, sometimes I've learned that there's a right place in time, and. I want to be able to receive everybody's right. uh, af- affection the same way, but I'm a human being, and sometimes it's bad. Like one time, people were I was with my dad in the emergency room, right. and my dad was having heart palpitations. People right. were like, "Yo, bro, you need to take a photo with us." And I was like, <laughs> uh, "My dad's having palpitations." Yeah, and they were like, "Why are you being like that, bro?" Right. And I was like, "You're wrong." 
your role, yeah. 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 So there's a time and a place, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I know. No, that, you're, like, you're, you're out of all the people I know in the public eye, you, I think, do it the best because you get mobbed the most and you just are the kindest of people. The one time I saw, not that I ever saw you get mad, the one time that <laughs> I got mad for you, but I didn't say anything, was we were in an airport. I forgot what city. Well, I know the city, but I don't want to out it. But we were in this city in the airport and we're about to go, th- we're going through TSA and the TSA lady who's at, who was at the, who was at the, you know, bag place like putting the bags through the x-ray machine yeah. she's like yo you that you that fucking <laughs> practical jokers and i was like and i was like okay whatever and she goes and you were like yes you were so kind you're like yeah hi how are you you know thanks for the support oh we walk yes we we start walking <laughs> away she leaves her post yeah. starts to call her girlfriend i believe on facetime or snapchat video or something like that she's like yo this this is my man from the practical jokers she put me live on live feed yeah three people walk through tsa not checked <laughs> So I swear to that's why I'm bringing it up. I was I witnessed. I walked through TSA with wicks coming out of his shoes. Yeah, and you know what day this was? September 11th. <laughs> 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 but, but, yeah, it was December 7th. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know what that whatever. I don't even know what that means. Anyway, Pearl Harbor. Yeah, yeah, but I was just trying to pick another day in infamy. Um, Could you imagine? So you caused <laughs> Sal calls Pearl Harbor. Clip it. And I said, uh, <laughs> so so he was dancing with fervor. With, with, with zest and fervor right. for like two, three hours, and no one Nobody. said a word to him. We were having a good and time drinking in from, the pool. He went from his umbrella, from his seated area, to the top of the pool area where the DJ was, and then at the foot of the pool, he was doing just beautifully choreographed dance moves. I felt like I was at a concert of his. Like, yeah, he was dancing. He was we that, were all watching. Like, this was guy's awesome. bold. Yeah. Like, there was... Uh, they only let a certain amount of people in, so let's call it 150. Those people were there at full capacity when he was there. And then now it's hours later. Maybe we're at, what, 30% capacity? There was maybe 30%. like 50... There was maybe like By the way, the only reason we got left. in, I want to shout her out, Lucy from Nashville, the manager, Lucy, Lucy from Nashville. Lucy, Lucy, Lucy.co, yeah. which is also a sponsor of the company. Use the promo, hey, babe, if you're looking to quit your nicotine, Addiction. No, but Zanies we're talking about. Zanies, Lucy Zanies. We love you, Zanies. Lucy's is, Lucy is great. She's the one who got us in. Yeah. So we get in, and then someone went out and looked at the sign in sheet because they were like, no, there's no way that's him. Because yeah. I said to other couple of people, I think that's Liam Richard. And the people said, I know who that is. That's not him. And they go, man, I know him pretty well. I think that's him. And that's they went him. and they looked at because you had to sign in. Remember? Yeah, I remember. And they went and they came back and they go, it's, it's him. him. He signed in. Yeah. And uh, even that, I felt weird about that. They were double checking. He right. signed in. <laughs> and um, we we're about to leave. Right. And it was three hours, and he was at the front of the pool. Now there's only 30 people left. No one's bothering him. And I'm saying, we're about to walk out. If I just walk out and just tell him, hey, man, I just want to let you know I'm, a, I'm just this huge fan of yours, right. and, and I've seen it's you great. in concert, and I just think you're the tops. Right. But I know better. Right. I'm like, L- I shouldn't. Let me leave this guy alone. But something in me. Some, that something in you was me telling you you can't yeah. leave. Because I said to you, I said, my favorite band is the 1975. If yeah. Matthew Healy, the lead singer of the 1975, yeah. was right there, I would have to go. I'd go up and I'd, I'd hug him. And I, no matter what happens, I'd have yeah. to say, at least let's introduce yourself. I said, you know what? You're right. We live in the moment. We live in life. Who knows when I ever see yeah. him again? And you did it. And it was, and as you said, it was wrong. It was bad. It was wrong. 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 What are you wrong. saying? Tupper or tubber? Say the first syllable. T- top. Wrong. That's what it was. <laughs> That's me. what it was. Top. I went against my better judgment, and I got my bag around my way, and we were, were going to walk out, and I just walked to the foot of the pool, and I and I and as I approached him, he had a couple of his friends, and I think one or two of his friends maybe, maybe recognized me, or look, do I look familiar? He, no, he recognized they, they gave you. gave me a look of like... Like that, and so I thought, okay. No, he did. He and did. I and I just went up to. Him. I didn't even get too close, and I just leaned in, and he was dancing, and he stopped dancing, and he looked at me, and I just was like, "Hey, don't even want to bother you at all. I'm on my way out. I just want to let you know. I think you are like the greatest musician musician on the planet." And he he just went like this, and I said, uh, "And uh, I I've seen him in concert multiple times. Yeah, uh, I had just seen him actually in Philly, and he was like, uh huh, and yeah. I said, and uh, I'm so sorry to bother you." Uh, and there was a little bit more involved because uh, he has a song that really meant something to me personally. Right, right. Uh, that that was what you told him, and I told him it was. There, there's just something I'll leave out. There's a little personal, but he has a song that really affected my life in a certain way, with, with, with a certain instance in my life. And I and I just said that in a very clean sentence. I told him that too, and then he just was like, "All right," and then he kind of just was. He's well. He actually said, "All right, that's what's up." And yeah. then he tur- and then he turned away and 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 he just like was kind of like very weary of me and I immediately said I'm an I'm the asshole 
I should have never went up to this person. He's enjoying himself. Yeah. Nobody bothered him for three hours. And I was the guy that couldn't let it go. They had to tell him what he means to me. And he hears that shit a hundred times a day. And without being <laughs> cynical, I get it. I get it without being cynical. He didn't need to hear from me in that instance. And I just went against my judgment. I walked out of there blaming myself. Right. But I will say, regardless of blaming myself... You can't walk away from something like that without feeling a little soured on the whole situation. The only and ever since then, I feel terrible about my relationship in my head with his music and him as a person. The only way to get him back is you have to now, It has years have to go by where he's forgotten about it, even you've forgotten about it, and he comes to one of the shows and he comes up to you and says, hey, you know, my kid... And I are such big fans. You helped your your comedy helped us through a major part in our life, and it was painful for us to get through this. But your comedy, Sal, your comedy uh, got us through it, and we just want to say, and I just want to say thank you. And then you go, "That's what's up." And then I just continue to do the hustle. Then yeah, yeah. and then and then you slide away <laughs> and you start singing, like, "Baby, <laughs> when we're grinding," yeah. like so, <laughs> and then you just walk away. I remember that moment. I felt when we walked out of there, I was like, I I, I sounded like Rayman. I'm like, that was so stupid. That was so yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. stupid. Yeah. No. I, I remember. I, I was just like, no, it's okay. It's, he forgot about. It. Here's what I genuinely think, though. Yeah. Let me just tell you what I genuinely yeah, think. Yeah. And again, this you know, he's a musician. He's an entertainer. Whatever. I think he was high out of his mind. Alleged. I know Alleg- even this is not. We can't, I don't know. You may, I, you That's know, true. It is, you know, I, I don't, just because I, there was a lot of people smoking weed, I just thought maybe, maybe he was I, high. Maybe I, maybe I, maybe we connected at the time that was not amenable to him. It's possible. Uh, I, I was under the false, I also had like a tinge of, not, I don't want to say confidence, maybe call hope that he, he might be receptive to my uh, affection because uh, we had an exchange on Twitter in the past. And he tweeted back at you. But, Yes, but that could have just been like he tweeted anyone in the right. world. But I thought there might be a small piece that he maybe knew who I was because we exchanged, but it, it was not the case. Wasn't that. Now, is that the only celebrity you've bombed in front of like that? No. Um, no. Most, most, no, I've had some crazy. Deb, Deborah Harry of Blondie was mean to me one time. Blondie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that the, I, Blondie, what's one of their oh, big songs? Blondie is a, I mean, a seminal Blondie. It was a band that came out of the eighties. Uh, I you definitely know, heard Lower of Blondie. Side, CBGB type punk new age uh, thing where she's even credited because in her song, uh, I guess maybe it might be Rapture. She she did what was considered in the very early stages of hip hop. She sang a, a couple of bars, but because she was this white woman at the forefront of a Got movement it. It. she kind of uh, you know just, there might be some criticism or there might be some acc- accolade to her for shining a light on what was then the, the nascent stages of hip hop right I think and you can so, say the nation of Islam no nascent <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah the early stages yeah. uh, she's uh, an icon she's a fashion icon she looks like Michelle Pfeiffer she's, she's the best uh, and I don't even want to but one time I was at a jazz concert <laughs> <laughs> I was at a Squirrel Nut Zippers concert. Were you having FOMO? For the New York Jazz Festival. Yeah. Uh, in Battery Park. Okay. And I was peripherally, uh, I kind of knew some of the people slightly, slightly in this band called the Squirrel Nut Zippers who were having, who still are amazing, but were having a real moment back then. And what a name. I, I went to a lot of, it's based after a candy, actually, a chewable hard candy. Squirrel Nut Zippers, yeah. shout out. And um, I saw them at this New York Jazz Festival and they recognized me because I was like a groupie of theirs that used to go to old, I think. Hilarious. And um, <laughs> they were so nice. And then um, Tom Maxwell and uh, and Jimbo Mathis and this guy Chris Phillips, who was their drummer, um, they asked me if I wanted to come backstage and have a beer with them and stuff. And I did. And so Deborah Harry was on that bill. And then I, I, she came up to me. And I had coincidentally, uh, I was not in the public yet, I had been to a movie premiere of a movie called Six Ways to Sunday that okay. starred her. And who's the guy who did the pian- pianist? The pianist? pianist? Yeah, Adrian Brody. He was in it. And uh, and so 
I was doing, at, I found myself at this nightclub called Life. Okay. That was the night. It was like the one in page six every week. Right. And it was the after party for this movie premiere. And I don't know how I got here. I, I might have even purchased a ticket. It wasn't what, like What I year had, are we talking? Oh, uh, my goodness. It has to be early 2000s-ish. Okay. 99, 2002, right. something like that. And I, and so I had met her. I had seen her at this nightclub after her movie. And, uh, and n- this was a very independent movie, and not many people saw it. And I thought, right. oh, here's my end. I saw Six Ways to Sunday, I believe it was called. And uh, I, I'm going to tell her how wonderful I think her music is, right. and then I, how great she was in this movie. Right. And uh, and I and and I saw her backstage, and I said, "Mrs. Harry, it's such an honor to meet you. Uh, the performance is great tonight. I've been a fan of yours forever, obviously. And Six Ways to Sunday, I was at the premiere, and you were amazing. And she went like this to me, <sighs> and she walked away. <laughs> and I I was beside myself. I love it. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that was a way to treat somebody. How do you feel? If you could I don't know if she maybe misheard Well, she's me. watching the show now. We know she's watching. Debbie, if yeah. you're watching, we know you are. So what? Yeah, so I mean, maybe, but again, maybe you just caught somebody. <laughs> How to act. How to act in front of famous people. Can you read that? Be polite and casual with them. Try not to freak out and act different around them when, than you would anyone else. That's good advice. Celebrities will likely appreciate being treated like regular people. You can compliment their work and tell them you're a huge fan, but try not to go overboard, like scream and cry when you talk to them. You I mean, actually did, did exactly that. what it said to do. You followed the celebrity yeah. playbook. I mean, I, didn't, I really didn't even go into Blondie. I just said, oh, it's such an honor to meet you because I know that she knows that I know who she is. Right. I don't got to get into like, oh, right. I love this cat catalog of your music i just said it's such an honor to meet you i loved you in six ways to sunday right which i thought she would be like oh my god like i i've i've i'm, I'm getting into acting i had this premiere you saw this so you, right. and uh, maybe i i just didn't even think she would say anything i just thought she'd be like thank you so much right but she went uh, and uh. walked away <laughs> and i was like what right. did you do did you did you I was like a little bit like in shock. I was like, did that just happen? Because she did it in front of other people. Right. And I just was like. How do you feel about I'm it? At, I'm maybe, I may be in, in, in deep waters. We have, sh- we have to find a way to get in touch with her. If you know Blondie. She, or- she's the equivalent of to- like being like, I'd love to talk to David Bowie for a moment. Oh, you can't, oh, you can't just get her? No, no. She's I, huge. I, don't think, I mean, she, not David Bowie, but like she is a. An icon. Is she in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I I bet you she is. I bet you she yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say she's not. Uh, is Blondie? It's either Blondie or Debbie Harry, for Deborah Harry, for, depending. Rock and Roll. Oh yeah, it already comes up. Oh, there's a Hall Hall of Fame controversy. Controversy. Okay, let's with see. Them. Yep, uh, Blondie got, and the Sex Pistols. Well, years. the Sex Pistols I've heard of. I hope so. The is sex Blondie and the Sex Pistols are, one one Sex Pistols is like the clash as far as like the punk revolution. Yo, Johnny, you, 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 you don't know what do you know about the Sex Pistols? I've just heard of the Sex Pistols. Yeah. I've heard of the Ramones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were going but I didn't know Blondie this. was one with the Sex Pistols. She was, uh, she was peripherally part of that entire revolution. Yes, I, the only celebrity encounter I had, really only like that, you know, that was a bomb, and that was like, ugh. Is so I was. In Los Angeles with Chaz Palminteri because I was doing a pilot for CBS, which never got on the air. It's in the toilets of CBS right now. But yeah. Chaz Palminteri, the great actor from Bronx Tale, who Homeless Pimp also runs the Chaz Palminteri podcast. Check that out. Check that out. What's the name of it? Chaz Palminteri Show. The Chaz Palminteri Show. Shout uh, out to Chaz Palminteri. Shout out to Chaz Palminteri. Yeah, and I love his restaurant. I, lo- I love Chaz. And it's, by the way, great food, great restaurant. He's got a restaurant in Manhattan. And the name of the restaurant is Chaz Palminteri, not Chaz Palminteri's. It's Chaz Palminteri. So he has the- a restaurant named after his, his birth certificate name. No, oh, no, his but, name. His name, but, but it's, it's not, not Chaz Palmateri's Grill. No, 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 no. But it's not even Chaz. No, it would normally be like if you would have a restaurant, it'd be Sal Volcano's. His is, there's no it's S. just the name. The, my, the name of my thing Sal is Volcano. Chaz Palmateri. It's Sal Volcano. Yeah. Not Sal Volcano. It's not Sal the, the name of this establishment is, is Sal Volcano. It's Chaz Palmateri. Where is that? I want to go eat there. It's, it's in Midtown. Chaz is one fun. of those people. Like we mentioned, didn't we mention, was it you that we were talking usual suspects? Yeah. He, he was in the Usual of Suspects. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole part. And he fi- he said he filmed his part. He filmed his part of the Usual Suspects like a week before they're like he filmed it like in a week Isn't before that- like the rest of the cast even got there. Like wow. he was like, I never. He had to have that moment at the end. He's the one that dropped the mug. Yeah, but they when he, he realized who Kaiser Sose was. But he did all that in in the week before wow. the, the main cast even got there. He was like, so I never really even met with any of them. I mean, not to not to so, harp on it, but I could say I could I could 
speak speak along every word to Bronx Tale probably. Bronx Tale is a fantastic yeah. movie. Yeah. He so he told so Chad. By the way, one of the funniest things I ever saw Chaz do is, and it's just how you know Chaz Palminteri is Chaz Palminteri. Is we were sitting at Chaz. I was sitting at Chaz Palminteri with Chaz Palminteri. We were eating. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. They yeah. Just, do, I mean, what are the people? Are they like when he shows up? I'm sure he's the type of guy everyone there knows him. He's there all the time. He's the best. So it's not anything. But when you're sitting at the table, right. of Chaz Palminteri with Chaz. Chaz Palminteri, yeah. what's that like? At the Chaz Palminteri table, which is a designated table. The Chaz Palminteri table with Chaz Palminteri <laughs> inside Chaz Palminteri. So it's like a Russian dolls of Chaz Palminteri. What is that like? It was unbelievable, and I'll never... You should have sent back food. I, well, here's what happened. Have fun. Have fun. Uh, you, can, you don't order... You don't You don't look at the menu with Chaz Palminteri. You the, just say, I'll have the Palminteri. The, the, you know, the food's just brought out to you. It's yeah. a Palminteri experience. You just bring out the food. So Chaz was wearing... Chaz was wearing a black turtleneck, black slacks, black shoes, which is the Chaz Palminteri look. He... He, I remember for CBS. For he's this, a real beatnik. Yeah, he's a real beatnik. <laughs> for the CBS sitcom, they had all these wardrobe options, and he was just like, listen, I'm just going to wear black turtleneck, black slacks, right? And that's I just what it, it was. I and they were like, it. so it's just Chaz Palminteri does what he wants. I yeah, love it. Yeah. yeah. So he, we're eating uh, chicken parm. At the, that's what they brought out. And he gets sauce on his turtleneck, and he goes, Maron. He goes, shit, I got sauce on my turtleneck. And I go, ah, oh, man, you know, that's okay. So we're going to go down to a show at the Comedy Cellar. And he goes like this, Victor. I need another neck. Exact quote. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. He goes, Victor, I need another neck. Victor, I swear, puts down a plate of food that he was either taking back or bringing to a table, puts it down, goes into the kitchen area, oh. comes out with a turtleneck on a hanger, gives him the ex identical turtleneck he's wearing, wow. gives it to him. Chaz goes, I'll be right back. Comes That's out. a man right now that I feel like I need to have a relationship with. Well, you will have a relationship with Chaz Palminteri. I love that no, man. No, Chaz Palminteri is going to be a guest on Wouldn't Hey Babe. I get along with Chaz Palminteri? A thousand percent you I get along like with Chaz Palminteri. I feel like I would. I'm an old soul. No, so. Not that he's old. I just mean like he's old school. He's old school. Yeah. So Chaz Palminteri, we're sitting down. This is, so that that's just a quick Chaz Palminteri story. But the celebrity encounter, because Chaz is obviously a massive celebrity. And by the way, the first time when we cast it for the pilot, was fantastic. Did I want to go to dinner with Chaz and Elon Musk and me and you and you. And I think we'll all get along. We're going to talk about Bronx Tale and Bitcoin. That's what yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Babes. Yep. We are in the thick of 2020's ugly sequel. And guess what? Life can still be stressful as F. Yeah, I mean, if you're feeling that existential dread whenever you have a couple of minutes of downtime, you might be experiencing those scaries. Luckily, our partners at Sunday Scaries make the best F and CBD products to turn those WTFs into LOLs. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about an old awkward date or that time you responded to a server telling you to enjoy your meal with a good old you, you too. too. Sunday Scaries is here to provide you the remedy to make life not so scary. Their CBD gummies are so perfect. They're the perfect product to help you kick back and chill the F out. They even added vitamins B12 and D3 to get that extra boost of vitamin goodness to give you the perfect blend to make you more tolerable to coworkers and friends. Babe, can I ask you a question? Yeah. You vegan? No. Sunday Scaries even has vegan gummies called Vegan AF that are the guilt-free version of CBD you've been kindly hunting to help you forget about Becky Showboat IG account. <laughs> Don't get shook in 2021. Get 20% off at sundayscaries.com and use the promo code HEYBABE. 20% off at sundayscaries.com with promo code HEYBABE. It's 20% off at sundayscaries.com with the promo code HEYBABE. Thanks, Sunday Scaries, for making Sundays chill, chill again. again. What do you think? Trick question. Okay. I don't think. <laughs> More than 50 million men in the United States, you know what they suffer from? I'm going to give you the initials. MPB. M M P P B. Yep. Michael. Peanut butter. Nope. Okay. Nail pattern baldness. Okay. Same. Nail pattern baldness. Close. And guess what? Yeah. There's actually what I, when I when I this morning I woke up. First thing I said to my mother. My mother slept over. First thing I said to her. I said, Ma, there's got to be at least five FDA recommended products for nail pattern baldness. She said, I would say more than that, honey. Guess what? Only two. There are only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss. And you know what one of them is? You know, Keeps. Keeps! They don't... They, no, that's not the medication. Keeps offers both of the two FDA-approved medications. What? Yeah, you, you ruined the whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 we're going to keep going. You're going to keep this keeps. in? You're going to keep this in? We're going to keep this in. Okay. Yeah. Well, Keeps, convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. You don't have to leave your home. Guess what? What? 
you know what? Whenever this episode comes out, yeah, it's probably going to come out somewhere soon yeah. around Easter time. Yeah. Guess what, baby? What? You're not getting peeps this year. You're, you're getting, getting keeps. keeps. That's what you get. That's and what guess what you got to do? All you got to do, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss now, all you got to do is go to keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash hey babe to receive, your, to receive your first month of treatment for free. What is it, Sal? Tell him, tell him again. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash hey babe to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash hey babe. You know when you go online? Okay. And you just you're home alone, right? And you're searching for everything that you want under the sun. Yes, you know that people can see that even if you're in incognito mode. I don't know what you're searching for, right? But, but you know that they're tracking everything. That's how you get personalized ads. And it's one of those things where it's like it's just something that I've like, I've accepted in my life that when I do stuff like that, people can see it and I, my ads <laughs> will be sold. And there's really nothing, absolutely nothing I can do about it. And it's just a sad, cruel world. It sounds like what we were implicating with that you go online and look up illegal things. That's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, I meant that you're being tracked all the time. Your information, your data is being sold all the time. Right, and I can't stop that. I'm well, saying. you can actually with ExpressVPN. No, 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 I can't. No, you what? can. ExpressVPN. I have. I have this even before they were on our show. I've had this for two, three years now on my computer and my phone. Wait a second. So you're telling me if I go to expressvpn.com, yeah. and I go into the incognito mode. No, no, oh, no. I don't even no, have to do that. No, 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 no. That's not it. Look, protect your online activity. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET, which is like, they're the end all be all. Sure. When you're talking tech, right? They should be called And A-Net. Wired, even. They're, those are the two big dogs. Visit uh, our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash hey babe, and you get an extra three months free on a one year package. That's e x p r e s s v p n dot com slash hey babe, expressvpn.com slash Hey babe, to learn more, do you know, want? Do you know what we're doing right now? Did, did you get that? I know exactly what we're doing, but I want to know if they can retroactively wipe out because I <laughs> I looked at some stuff yesterday that you're going to have to contact the company directly. Okay, and you might have to pay an extra fee. And I cannot really say yes or no whether they could do it, but they can absolutely do it. So just go no, to express VP, expressvpn.com slash hey babe. I get three months off a full year package. Nobody knows what I'm Googling. You can't see my ads, and that's what it is. It's available on all your devices. It's uh it's 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 you, you can put it on your smart television. It runs seamlessly in the background. You tap the one button, you turn it on, and you're protected. And in this day and age, Everyone can use a bit more protection. Can we not? We can. ExpressVPN.com slash hey babe. Go do it right now. And we won't know you did it because it blocked out your data. The Buffy Comforter. I can't say enough about the Buffy Comforter. My girlfriend's pregnant right now. She literally, she this is her third child. She's saying that this pregnancy is getting easier and easier every day since we got the Buffy. I'm dude, I'm telling you, she used to night sweat. You have to understand how much she used to night sweat. I mean, it would be like literally somebody took her in the middle of the night, threw her in her pool, and then put her back in the bed. Gross. In night sweat. Gross. No more night sweats because the breeze Buffy regulates the temperature. And for all you vegans out there, it's it's 100% plant-based design. Wow. The you can eat is, the sheets. It's made of eucalyptus fabric inside and out. It's softer than cotton. It, it naturally suits the skin. It's earth-friendly. It's hypoallergenic. It's cruelty-free. It brings I'm wellness. telling you. This is cr- ridiculous. It's full of eucalyptus debris. Don't let it near a koala bear. You can try a comforter in your own bed for free. Not Sal, because I haven't sent him one yet. They're sending it to me. If you don't love it, you return it at no cost let me tell you something right freaking now buffy if you're just going to scroll down a little bit pippy buffy is one of those things where i'm telling you it got sent to the house at first i was like what is this the buffy because you're thinking buffy the vampire slayer you're thinking yeah. what does buffy mean and yeah. then it it's this beautiful bedding i put it down i took a three-hour nap my kid was w- walking around the house my five-year-old walk, she turned on the oven i had no idea because i'm gonna sleep on the buffy. are you serious sleep on the buffy uh, i thought of buffy chickens at first right nope tell from my old neighborhood Okay, here we go. If you go to Buffy.co, because listen to me, a company like Buffy doesn't have time to put the N- M in. Yeah. It's Buffy.co, C-O, and you enter Hey Babe. That's H-E-Y-B-A-B. You ready for this? Yeah. $20 off. $20 for a Spanish-speaking audience, $20 Yeah, that's off. A- Andrew Jackson? Buffy.co without the M. Buffy.co, enter Hey Babe, H-E-Y-B-A-B-E, $20 off. It's unbelievable. Sal doesn't know what I'm talking about because he didn't get the Buffy. I did. 
Chaz Palminteri, first time I met him in Los Angeles after we hired him for the pilot in New York City. He's walking on the treadmill at 3.5 miles per hour, full Fila Velour sweatsuit, sunglasses, and dress shoes. Walking at 3.5, he goes, this is what I do every day for Velour an hour. with the dress. Because he shoes. said, he goes, a lot of people ask me what my secret is to staying in shape all these years. He goes, it's right here, kid. And then he just pointed to his outfit, his shoes, his glasses, and 3.5 in the tread. So that's, that's the 3.5 what? 3.5 miles per hour on the treadmill. He would walk. He walks for an hour, 3.5 <laughs> miles per hour on the treadmill, looking in, straight at in Capizio. No book, no book, no music. In a in like a, a fila, like or like a you know a, with dress shoes, with dress shoes on and sunglasses with a, with, a, with a leather upper. Sunglasses on inside. We were an indoor gym in the hotel. Sunglasses on. Nah, it's Chaz a man is Chaz. who paves his own road. That's what it is. Chaz, he's got that. a driver. Chaz Pumentary never drives his own car. He sits in the back seat of the cars. He has somebody else. It's just Chaz. It's Chaz. It's a 10 out of 10. I can't explain to. How much I love Chaz. I want to come back to this, not even to deviate, but for one second, speaking about a guy who pays his own road, shout out Tom Brady. Shout out Tom Brady. <laughs> won the Super Bowl with the Bucks. God bless him. But Old I also guy in the NFL. I also just want to Last say week. also, but I also just want to say congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. Second place. You cannot tip the hat. Not not tip the hat. So Chaz Palminteri, yeah. we're in Los Angeles. Chaz is his real name then? Cologelo is his real name. Oh, named at the C. Yeah. So Cologelo yeah. is his real name from uh, Bronx Tale. Yeah, that's it. Cologelo. Yeah. And by oh, the way, I Chaz is uh, is Chaz universally a shortened Colosio, or is he Chaz independently of the name Colosio? No, that's a good question. Right. But I mean, is there a better name than Chaz? Is there a better name than Colosio Pomentary? I don't think so. Chaz, yeah, and 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 you know, his is uh, you know, been to his house uh, many times for dinner. Beautiful. I mean, the the Pomentary, Shout out to Pomentary, whole Pomentary family. I mean, ten out of ten, greatest people, great cooks. I mean, the, the Pomentary, just hospitable. I can't explain to you how much my family loves Pomentary. Yeah. Cannot okay, wait until I break bread with Chaz Palmateri. Oh, I'm putting it out into the universe. Oh, it's going to happen. Like the book, The Secret, and look, which I never read, but I read articles uh, about. And look at this. Going back to the year. Look at the years active for Chaz Palmateri's Wikipedia, 1984 to present. Came came on the scene in 84. The, the day you were born. The day I was August born. August 26, 1984. Cologero Lorenzo Palmateri, May 15, 1952. <laughs> um, so Chaz, so we're in, we're in. We're in Catch in Los Angeles, very trendy upscale restaurant in L.A. in 2016-ish, 2017 when I'm doing the CBS pilot. Chaz playing my dad. Annie Potts playing my mom. Shout out Annie Potts. Diane Guerrero from Orange is the New Black playing my wife. I'm so proud Fantastic of you. Fantastic actress. Really so proud of you. Dina Maria uh, Rivas, who's, who's, who's up. I think she's up for an award now. Um, uh, I, I, I think a Golden Globe or something. Did you, you Great posted, actress. You posted the pilot, right? I did. Did they ever take it down? They did not. So direct people to the pilot. Go on my Instagram or my YouTube, youtube.com slash Christy Comedy. My full CBS pilot is up there. I'm wearing cargo pants and a sweatshirt. And it's just- Were you in an Islanders jersey? I was there? in an Islanders yeah. jersey at one Shout point. Out. Was created, co-created by, you know, it was off, based off my comedy, but also- Everybody the, else Raymond. No, How I Met Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother. Craig Thomas Excuse. and Carter Bass. So there's Chaz with a hairpiece. Uh, Chaz, yeah. Uh. So, and the great Diane Guerrero. So, so anyway, so we're, do, so we're hanging out. So we're hanging out in this, uh, in Catch, L.A., me, Chaz Palminteri, and Chaz's friend, Sonny, who I just will keep it there. Sure. So Sonny is just a friend from the neighborhood, nothing. great guy. I don't know nothing. Sonny, he literally looks like he's made of Italian steel. Sonny, just a guy that, let's just say when you're, when Chaz is with Sonny, you're not going to get too close to Chaz. If, 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 you know, if Sonny was next to Leon Bridges that day, yeah. you would have been no. back in the pool. Back you know in what I mean? Pool, yeah. He would have thrown you in the pool. That's fun. <laughs> It's yeah, no. fun to be like I got a guy. Yeah, I mean, I it's just a I just filmed him give me a tour of the Bronx for YouTube. Yeah, and the the people he rolls with are unbelievable. Birth control, Birth control, and also it's the most I've ever seen people with face tattoos cry meeting somebody. <laughs> yeah, what? everybody who's chat dude Chaz is one of those guys, man. Where like when you go out with Chaz Palmiteri, you don't even you know how like somebody's PR agent would call ahead. <laughs> Like somebody's PR agent would call Chaz ahead. Chaz is basically like Bitcoin. Chaz is Bitcoin. Because he's done a lot of good, but some of the stuff he's put out there, like two percent of it, is not good. Not good. But it, but we'll just we won't talk about that part. That's what it is. Yeah. So Chaz, so so when Chaz shows up at like a if like a restaurant or like a, a nightclub is like packed and there's a line out the door, yeah. There's no PR call ahead. Chaz just walks up to the security guard and they give they face they recognize who he is and they open the thing. It's and they, he's better to be loved or feared. It's and that's what it is. And they never say welcome, son. They never say welcome, Chaz. So he's welcome, Sonny. They just he they call him. No. He is called by his character name wherever he goes. That's what it is. Sonny had five fingers, but he only used three. That's what it is. I mean, the behind the scenes, by the way, go, I mean, go listen to the Chaz Pontieri podcast because it gets into a lot of this. But I mean, the behind the scenes stories that I was told by Chaz of writing a Bronx tale and coming up with, you know, the door test and all these iconic the movies. Test. Like he would talk to me like like we're doing right now. Like it's so. So I'm sitting with Chaz, me, Chaz and Sonny. We're in catch. Chaz, you three. 
Just us three right now. Catch, I love that. It's great. Catch LA, great place. We're in the corner. You know, Chaz gets a corner table, of course. Mm. They Two things happen when Chaz walks into a place. They give him the corner table, and I guess people just know this. They bring him out a shrimp cocktail tower. That's how it works. Wow. So they came out with the shrimp cocktail tower. They said, here you go. Jumbo? J- of course. Come Jumbo. on. I mean, Chaz Palminteri. Oh, yeah. So, so... All, with that, we're having a great time. I bet you he doesn't even... Yeah, I bet you he eats jumbo shrimp like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. Yeah, like it's popcorn. Yeah. Joel Embiid from the Philadelphia 76ers sure. walks in on one side. Sure. Yeah, and he just says, you know, w- literally makes... He goes, Sonny, love you. Love you, Sonny. And then Chaz says, without even missing a beat, while he's eating a shrimp cocktail, he goes, trust the process. Trust the process is Joel Embiid's slogan. Your... Chaz knew yes. the slogan and hit him back with it like that. Immediately. How cool do you have to be yeah. to have someone be like, yeah. I mean, that's the coolest interaction I've ever heard in my entire he life. Got, he's just called, because Joel, I, I mean, Joel and you Embiid, witnessed it. I, I was right there. Joel Embiid came over and he, he said, he said, I'm such a big fan, Sonny. I, 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 love, all, I love all your work. And he goes, trust the process. Ch- you, didn't, you didn't hand... Chaz, a napkin under the table that said, trust the process. No, Chaz knows. Chaz, no, Chaz, Chaz knows. Chaz is one of those guys he doesn't even really drink. He'll hang out to 8 o'clock in the morning all day. Every, he'll hang I out. Need to, I need to meet Chaz. So the, I, need to, I need to meet Chaz. I need to have like a seven-hour meal with Chaz that spans from yeah. a cold antipas to a hot yeah. antipas to a salad to a yeah. pasta to a meat to a dessert to a coffee to then just after dinner drinks to limoncello <laughs> to the flashing the lights. Literally. I need to have that night with Chaz where we talk about everything and when we come out of that experience, it, it jumps us, it leapfrogs us like three years. I would say, I Sal, if I'm your wish... It's like the secret. I've never read the secret, but I've read articles about the secret. I'm going to tell you this right now, and 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 you can back me up on this, pimp. If you want the Chaz Palminteri connect, I don't think there's a better connect than me and homeless pimp. You don't think we I'll, are the connection to Chaz Palminteri? I'll, I will bring him some pinoli and some fresh mozzarella, and I will I will go. To, I will bring some nice a nice dish to his house, maybe a beautiful bottle of wine, and I will I will introduce I, I will introduce yeah. myself, and then I just would love to talk to him about times past. A hundred percent, he's going to do it. By the way, Chaz Palminteri's got the greatest wine cellar. I mean, he's got full paintings of Italy. He's got. He'll take that. I'll put it right in the wine cellar. Let's do it as a frolic session for the Patreon for Hey Babe coming out soon. There you go. So here we go. So we're sitting at Catch LA. Joel and B comes in. Trust the process. Bang. That's what happens. All of a sudden, there's a lot of commotion on the other side of the restaurant. Almost to the point where I thought there was a fight. I was like, oh, you know, and you know, Sonny even thought there was a fight because I could tell he like looked up like he's like a human pit bull. He looked up and I was like, okay, anybody gets even close to Chaz, everyone's going to die. Right. I was going to be used as a human shield, and that's just what it is. I'm, you know, it's just you Palminteri. You know I, your role. I, 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 you and know. by the way, be honored for that role. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what it is. They always talk. Chaz Palminteri always talks about. It. He always picks out a guy in the restaurant. And always say, yeah, this guy's the that's first to go. <laughs> he'll always say that this guy's the first to go. Like he'll, he'll look around back. I look at this guy. He's the first to go. So <laughs> I knew. At that morning, I was the first to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gonna be a little a hang over your head a little bit. Yeah, yeah. When you're like, uh, you, when you're like, when you all meet up and the whole party is there, and you yeah. look and you do a check, and you're like, oh, I'm the first. I'm the first to go. He yeah. always says, ah, this guy's the first to go. It's great. You're getting, you're getting the bullets in the chest. Yeah. yeah. So there's, so there's a, there's a, all this commotion in the front. I said, what the hell? What's going on? Sonny looks over. Even Charles looks over. Still in shrimp cocktail. I look over. It's Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. Tell me he comes over and pays respects, please. Are you kidding me? Wait, I'm about to tell you. Yes. Your balls got blown off. They grew back. Unfortunately, you're going to- One of these days, they're not going to grow yeah. back. I hope you have insurance on them because yeah. balls are going to get blown off. Yeah. It's Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend at the time. Uh, the kid from Spider-Man. Topher, um, uh, Grace? Topher Grace. The kid from Spider- Tobey Maguire. Tobey Maguire. Right. That's who it is. Right. Tobey Maguire. The kid from Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire, and two or three other Toby people. Tobey Maguire- is the kid from Spider Man, aka he is Spider Man. He's Spider Man. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So the, is that the same person? The Spider Man kid. Yeah. To- <laughs> sea Biscuit. Yeah. Toby McGuire. Because yeah. they were a crew. DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they were always going to, they were page six out the S. Uh, here's what I'm about to tell you. Yeah. Toby McGuire, the Spider Man kid. Leonardo's wait, girlfriend, who's wait. a sport. Tobey Maguire is, is not the Spider-Man kid. Put some respect on Maguire's name. I'm going to put he's some respect. Spider Man. Uh, I know. He's yeah, Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. He's not. You know, so I don't know where he's been, right. but he probably made his fortune, and now he's just having a great day. He's having a great day. Yeah, yeah. So he used to he used to roll Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend at the time, who was a Sports Illustrated supermodel named Nina Ogdal, who I actually did uh, Guy Code with. She was on a season of Guy Code when I was on Guy Code. She MTV walks was, in, and you had already done, so you had to connect with his girl, I, and then continue. So here we go. So it's on MTV Two. So. Leonardo DiCaprio comes over. He's on the he's on the other he, he's on the other side of the restaurant. Wait, 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 Chaz, wait, wait. wait before you okay. continue, the show is on MTV too. 
A guy called on MTV Continue. Two. Yeah. So so Chad, not MTV, MTV Two. Sure. So Chaz, with that, says he goes, oh, "I know Leo." He goes, "To be honest with you, he goes, I known Leo since before he was anybody." He goes, "I told Leo." He goes, I told Leo when he was just a kid, I said, listen, kid, this is a game of inches. It's only going to be a millimeter on why you're going to be a star and somebody else ain't. He goes, always remember that. So I'm like, wow, that's crazy, right? Whatever. Tell me Leonardo DiCaprio comes over and was like, Chad, hey, guys, I'll do it. Hey, it's a game of inches and walks away. Tell me he echoes the sentiments. Here's what I'm about to tell you. Leonardo DiCaprio also has bodyguards. Of course he has bodyguards. Sure, he's Leonardo DiCaprio. You ever see Leonardo DiCaprio's dad? No. Peculiar guy. Interesting. He's a very, very, has a very uh, specific look to him. Uh, Maybe he's not his real Casey dad. Casey Joe's texted me last week and he goes, no joke. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> George DiCaprio. Shout out George DiCaprio. Casey texted me this on the, today is the- Casey Joe's, the creator of the ago. Hey Babe uh, intro song. Yes, intro and theme Taste song. Buds. And Taste Buds. He texted me this seven days ago. He goes, have you ever seen a photo of Leonardo DiCaprio's dad? You're like, no. He goes, give it a Google. It's a fun one. You go, what's with that blazer but naked underneath? And he goes, and part of it is tied around her waist. Very confusing. Oh, no, that's something else. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Edit that part out. But yeah, so I was just talking about Leonardo DiCaprio's dad. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, him. That's him. So Leonardo- but continue now. Okay. So Leonardo DiCaprio, without his father, yeah. is in the restaurant. He goes, gets up to go use the bathroom. You're with, chomping on shrimp cock. With the, we're, we're eating shrimp cock. We're eating shrimp cock. You can't imagine. I am literally deep throwing shrimp cock. Jim Jones. Yeah. So so he's the bathroom is, is not that far from the table. So Chaz, you know, again, at the top of his lungs- <laughs> Leo's it's Leonardo DiCaprio like yeah. we were like everybody was like you can't go by Leo's table there's security guards here. it's Leonardo DiCaprio he's arguably the most famous person in all of Hollywood Leo is walking towards the bathroom with the security guard Chaz goes Leo get the <laughs> over here I swear to God wow I swear to God Le wow Leo looks and but, I you're at Chaz Palminteri no, we're at Catch LA. Oh, Catch LA. That's my bad. You now, said Leo uh, again I he must hear stuff like that all the time right the security guard looks up you know, because Leo didn't look up at the time, whisper something to Leonardo DiCaprio. I would imagine saying, I believe that's Chaz Palminteri. Leo literally looks up like a 10-year-old boy and goes, Chaz! Chaz! <laughs> I swear to God, goes, are you, are you here? Are you going to be here for a little bit longer? Like a kid. Chaz goes, of course, we just sat down. He goes, let me just go to the bathroom. Let me go to the bathroom. Whispers something to the security guard's ear. With that, the table that Tobey Maguire, Sp the Spider-Man kid, Nina Ogdal, his Sports Illustrated waitress, and the other people were there. That table gets lifted up, gets connected to our table. No. Yes. Uh, what? Yes. Are you like Nia Ogdal on yes. TV2? Well, here's what happens. Yeah. Leo DiCaprio comes out of the bathroom, which is all done. He comes back down, sits down, of course, next to Chaz. The only time and by I the way, shout out to Leo for going to the bathroom to piss, because that guy could piss anywhere he wants. He could piss anywhere. He could have pissed, <laughs> he could have pissed on my shrimp cocktail. Yeah, I still yeah. would have eaten that. Right in the shrimp cock. He could have peed in the shrimp cock. You would have ate it and said, can I have more? 100%. <laughs> it's a golden shrimp t tower. Yes. So, so with that, he sits down. Leonardo DiCaprio, I'm, so now it's, Sonny gets up, moves to one side. Leonardo DiCaprio, of course, at the head of this, this new form table. Sure. Chaz Palminteri, and then I was sitting next to Chaz. I, there was no reason for me to move. Nina Ogdell directly across from me, because she's sitting next to Leo. So Leo says to Chaz, he goes, I haven't seen you in so long. He goes, I just want to say thanks so much for all the advice you gave me coming up. And then Chaz looks at me, he goes, the game of inches. Do you remember the game of inches? He goes, of course. He goes, and thank you for telling Martin Scorsese to take a chance on me. Chaz had told Scorsese, hey, Leonardo DiCaprio is a really great actor. And he kind of Chaz and you, you told Chaz, you know, uh, Chaz told Martin Scorsese, I really think you should bet on Leonardo DiCaprio. At that time, Leonardo DiCaprio was fucking Bitcoin. Nobody knew who he was going to be. So Leonardo DiCaprio remembers Chaz, and I'm telling you, looked up to Chaz, looked up to Chaz like, like a 10-year-old boy. With that, Chaz says, he goes, who's your friend? To Tobey Maguire. He goes, oh, he's in Spider-Man. He goes, Spidey, love this kid. That's why I kept calling him the Spider-Man kid, because I, I, I was oh my He God. called him Spidey. Only Chaz could do that. Chaz, and Tobey Maguire starts laughing. He goes, I, Spidey, I goes, love this kid. And he tells the waiter, he goes, we need more shrimp cocktail for Spidey. He, he keeps calling him Spidey, and they're loving it. So we're having right, a good, we're having a, we're having a good time. Nina Ogdal, you know, and, and you know, they're all talking, whatever, telling stories. Leonardo DiCaprio is the most down to earth guy. I, I, I mean, it's unbelievable what a nice guy this is. Sure. This is Chaz is telling hilarious stories. Sonny's laughing. With that, I did you ever get past the conch? Did you ever get to tell a story to everybody? Did here's you ever what happened. Court? Here's because this whole thing started with celebrity bombs. 
what happened was is again I'm kind of sitting there nervous. I don't really know what to say. Oh, I'm very God, out of place. No, you bombed. <laughs> Oh so, my God! I, even right now, I don't want to hear this for so, you. So, this so, is your fate. You bomb. So, Nina, I start talking to Nina Ogdal. I start who you know, who I know. Was, did, did she? Did she reciprocate that that she knew you? Obviously. I said, I said, hey, Nina, I don't know if you remember me, and I could tell she did not. She was like very polite and sweet. I was like, I don't know if you remember me, but we work together on Guy Code, and she, you know, she's from like Denmark. So she's like, oh yeah, ah uh, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, hi, hi. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, that's, that's nice. You know, like, whatever. But she didn't remember me. Yeah. So then I'm, we're ta- I'm, I'm like, how are things? Whatever. And she's like, oh, good. You know, I did cover Sports Illustrated or whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll be at Bananas in Hasbro Heights, <laughs> New Jersey. I got, you know, I, you know, you know, I'm like, you know, she, she's like, so, so. <laughs> I got a, I got a deal on uh, Groupon right now. Yeah. So living, I'm like, yeah. So yeah, I, hit me, living social, my living social deal is going well. Going well. So, so I'm like, you know, so we're talking yeah. about, so, you know, for a minute. Then Leon DiCaprio looks at me, and I say to Leonardo DiCaprio, I go, oh, Leo, no, it's all good. I was just, <laughs> we worked together on MTV2. We worked together on MTV2, so that's why we're talking. And he goes, buddy, it's okay. You can talk to her. He goes, you worked with her on MTV2? That's sweet. And then Chaz goes, he goes, why the f- would you announce that you worked with Nina, <laughs> with, with his girlfriend on MTV2? Chaz, Chaz goes, he goes, do you think he's threatened by you because you guys worked on he MTV2? That's I so funny. Go. He goes, tables rock, roaring laughing. Die, I mean, yeah. Spidey is dying. I always be like, Spider-Man, listen, you little yeah. I'll field goal kick you. <laughs> He right goes, really, face. Chris? He goes, yeah. MTV, too. He goes, this guy just won a an Oscar. <laughs> he goes, because he had just won for The Revenant. He goes, he just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was during The Revenant? During The Revenant, he goes, Woo. he goes, this guy just won the Oscar. He goes, you think he's worried about you working with it from MTV, too? And then, and then Leo goes, he goes, yeah, Chris. He, he goes, which is pretty cool that he remembered my name. He was like, yeah, Chris. He goes, that's fine. He goes, you can talk about MTV, too, to her. All night long. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So funny. So That's funny. So, so cool. funny. Then we go. But so you didn't bomb though, because you kind of ingratiate with that. He ingratiated. Like it was kind of like a breaking of the ice. Well, it was. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't because I mean Nina did not say a single word to me for the rest of the night. Wow. Yeah. I mean. Odd. I mean, it's just like you know. Well, she's now talking to Leo. And, sure. And it's just like whatever. So it so, wasn't awkward. It was no. fun. No, no, it was all fun. And then and then you really see like famous, famous. So then like, because you know, Chaz is very famous and whatever. So we go downstairs. Yeah, Chaz's name is Leo is Leo, one of the most famous people on the it's planet. Like, yeah. It's like there's levels. And even sure. Chaz said there's like levels of fame. Like it's sure. crazy. Like there's doors that open upon doors. Yeah. So we go down through a private back door to get to retrieve Sonny and Chaz's car through a private back door to get to the like garage, which there's like parking spaces in a garage, but then there's like a garage inside of a garage that you know, where, where Chaz's car is, sure. guys like that. So we're like, oh, whatever, get out. All of a sudden, we see an elevator open, which was like, you know, a freight elevator that didn't think no cars would be in and out of. All of a sudden, a platform car. a platform <laughs> comes up. There's a 2017 Maserati there. Chad, the Leonardo DiCaprio comes out of a back door behind a back door with his entourage. They get in the Maserati. See That's you later. That's how you know how famous you are. It's yeah. how sub-level the garage is right. and how many back doors to the back door you're allowed to walk through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it, that's so that was the time when like the major celebrity. But I got to be honest with you, Leonardo DiCaprio, he couldn't have been nicer and more down to earth. And like, I couldn't believe a guy as famous as him. And it's just a beautiful thing. A guy as big as him and as revered as him to be as cool as he was. Yeah. Like really just a cool yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the secret. Like when you get that big, you got to stay le- You got to stay level, grounded. man. He was great. But that was like my time with you everyone know. you mentioned. I feel like I really would get along with. Dude, I'm telling you, I know. Some, you know, who, you know, I know people like I, Fat Joe. I know Fat Joe. I could text Fat Joe right now. Like I know people. Actually, this show, I did the MLB. Um, oh, by you want to talk. I want to talk about another quick story. I'm sorry that this one's what do you mean, quick? about me. We came here to do this. Oh, that's why we're doing the show, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, So I'm wearing this sweatshirt. The whole venture is about this. 2014 MLB All-Star Game. I hosted a show on MLB, uh, on the MLB. Off the bat. Off, off the, the cuff, bat. Off the it, bat. Was, it was MLB and MTV2. They tried to, MLB wanted to make their audience younger. So they said, let's team up with people from MTV2. They put the show on at Sundays at 11 a.m. It's like, that's not necessarily the best time right, frame. That's but what very can young. You, that's what can you do? Yeah, yeah. it's pretty young. It's, it's yeah. morning cartoons. <laughs> the MLB2, <Yeah>. two, <laughs> MLB two, you're off the bat, the, the demo was ages two to five. Ages two to five. Yeah. So the hosts of this show are uh, Sway. 
from yeah. Sway in the Morning, yeah. the great, the great Sway Calloway. Sway. I mean, radio legend, icon. Five interviewed, fingers, five fingers of death. Isn't five it? fingers of death. Interview, yeah. interviewed Tupac and Biggie. Yeah, and President Obama four times. Actually, um, I was supposed to. We got a, a, a we got a offered to go on Sway recently, and I think that Joe and Murr took that. And it's really funny to me that Murr is on Sway in the morning, <laughs> yeah. and I really hope he did okay yeah. because you know because Sway, I, I want to, I, I would want to impress Sway. Sway, so Sway, great. I mean, literally taught me like so many things. Like Sway is just like I can't say enough positive things cool about cat, Sway. That guy. Oh, great. Sway is just a great guy with again unbelievable. Stories. I mean, Tupac, Biggie interviewed Barack Obama four times. President Obama, yeah. like just like like literally, Sway Obama will call Sway on his private phone. That's crazy. That's wild. how like that's how it is. You ever, I get some. You ever hear Sife tell stories sometimes? Sife sounds he's yeah. Just like he's at the like nexus yeah. of like seminal moments. Oh yeah, in hip hop, and it's like and oh, he's yeah. got pictures then, to prove it. And then just, yeah, and then we're just eating like a slice of Sicilian pizza. Yeah. at four a.m. on a Tuesday together. Yeah. It's like yeah, you get these stories. But continue, please. So 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 the hosts so the hosts are. Sway, number one. Um, uh, Fat Joe, greatest rap, you know, great rapper, uh, Bronx icon, Fat Joe. Melanie Iglesias, another uh, uh, model from also MTV2 Sky Code and Maxim model. And then me. I have a Fat Joe story. Continue. So, oh, Fat Joe. I mean, literally, we could do Fat Joe stories for another, po- like a whole podcast of Fat Joe stories. Like, you, Fat Joe is the man. He told me he lost 150 pounds by just drinking black cherry seltzers. That's all he changed in his diet. He said, I went from black cherry. He said, I used to drink sodas. Now I'll do black cherry seltzers. I'm 150 down, boy. I was like, okay. So it's a crazy diet. So it's crazy diet. It's zero calories. Zero calories. Yeah. So greatest guy, Fat Joe. But so we're doing the show. We're doing, we're doing um, uh, the, the off the bat show. And then part of the thing, you know, you know, because it's all in with MLB and MLB wants to promote their own show. The MLB All-Star Game comes along in July of 2014 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Target Field. You're in it. I'm in it playing in the celebrity softball game because me, Melanie Iglesias, Fat Joe, and Sway all got to play in the celebrity softball game. Right. So a couple of things happened. One, we're in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the time. Adrian Peterson was the star running back of the Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings. Vikings. And, I mean, absolute double threat. Couldn't imagine how great of receiving, a guy this was. A receiving running back. So it was age in the lineup. He which was it. He was number one pick for everyone. They they announced they announced in the lineup that, you know, they, they had us all line up on the third baseline. We were on the third baseline. And they announced to the crowd of 40,000 people each individual player, and we would step forward and get applause breaks. Right, so it's Adrian Peterson, me, then a man who lost both all four of his limbs in the war. Right, who was playing? So you're in a good position. Right, right. I am now. I'm on. An, I'm, I'm the. I'm the fourth lead. I'm the fourth leading host of a show on MTV Two that's on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Adrian Peterson steps up. You. Could, it was. It was as if those, those planes flew over the stadium. The I Blue mean, Angels. It's Adrian Peterson. Adrian. Adrian. I step forward. I swear to God. You told me this. The only, well, this is because it happened to me with Phil Collins, too, yeah. okay. with the Knicks. The only person I heard, the only person I heard was my father. All I heard was my father. Fu- wow. My father was there. I heard my father clapping and my friend Pat Finnegan, Patty Flyballs, who yeah. was there. I could see him with his cell phone recording the whole Are thing. Are you on what field? Uh, uh, Target Field in Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota. You're with on the, twins the actual play. field. Oh yeah, the, playing. The, yeah, yeah, no, we're playing the game. So then, then, the, then the, the next guy goes up. The man, you know, who lost all his limbs in the war. People are actually weeping and crying for him, of course, as they should be. So I was like, okay, I mean, this, I'm, you know, bomb. This is bad. Whatever. It's a softball game. Okay, I don't get put in the starting lineup. John Smoltz, greatest, great hall, hall of Fame, Atlanta, Braves. Hall of Fame, Atlanta Braves pitcher, is the head coach. Jenny Finch is also on my team. Jenny Finch, who's the uh, you, iconic United States like gold gold of medal course. winning softball softball player. Ricky Henderson, yep. <laughs> Ricky Henderson, Andre <gasps> Dawson, the Hawk, Mike Piazza. Uh, um, uh, who else? So many. Ozzy Smith, the Wizard. Oh my God! All Did you do my, a flip? Yes, all you on my did. team. These guys are all on my team. Yeah. Uh, Larry Fitzsimmons, the 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 running uh, the wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. I hate him. Hate him. why? Uh, I'm joking. It's Larry Fitzgerald, though. Larry Fitzgerald is yeah. what I meant to say. I'm sorry. I I, I mixed up Greg, Greg Fitzsimmons, Fitzsimmons. who's the comedian. Yeah. Greg Fitzsimmons and Larry Fitzgerald, you can easily yeah. you get them easily. Greg confused. Fitzsimmons is the Larry Fitzgerald of comedy. Absolutely. Hall yeah. of Famer. So I don't start. Then I say they 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 
you know, I pinch hit. I come in with the softball game. You could pinch hit, and then you could go back, go into the no, field. Yeah. There's no rules, whatever. So I go up. It's softball. The first pitch, I, I, um, I'm up against. Uh, I forgot who who was Kevin Millar was the c- catcher behind me. It was actually really cool. He was he was the catcher, and then the pitcher was he used to be on the Twins, Jack something. I forgot what his name was. He was a pitcher. Twins. He was on the Twins. He won the World Series. I'm forgetting what his name was. My father, like you he know, was their ace. He was the, he was their ace, but he was the softball pitcher. I'm just forgetting what his name was. What year was he? Like in know. the 80s. The roster. But Five. but they won the World Series. Baseball. I don't know. Okay. But anyway, first batter up, I pop up to the catcher. And then Kevin Millar tags me out. He goes, ooh, that was rough. But, you know, if whatever he said, he was like, ooh, whatever, it was rough. So then I go into the outfield. I'm in the outfield. They give me, as a goof, they give me this humongous glove, like a way oversized glove. I think if you Google Chris Stefano MLB All-Star Game oversized glove. I'm standing in left field with this oversized humongous glove. Somebody hits a pop-up to me. It hits me in the face. So what? now, yeah, so now I've popped up to the catcher. I've been hit in the face with a softball in front of 40,000 people. <laughs> and even Melanie Iglesias got a hit and got on base. No. So now, so now I'm up for the second. You mean it was a comically oversized glove? Comically like oversized. The ju- like they were like, we're going to make this playful. Right. Or do you just mean they gave you a glove that happened to be way too big for you? No, it was like a comically oversized purpose, glove. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, I'm a comedian. It'll be funny. It, by the way, it bombed. I was like, well, look at this sure. glove, guys. And Andre Dawson and John Smoltz were like, this is not funny. Just like we take this stuff seriously. We're professional baseball players. Also, Nelly was on my team who won the MVP of the game. He's a fantastic player. I think he had four home runs. Really? Yes. Nelly was on my team. Band-Aid or no Band-Aid? Uh, I think Band-Aid. Nelly, by the way, shout out Nelly, just sold his mansion. Um, I saw that. Or, it's, or it's at least it's listed. It's listed, but he got a buyer, so congrats. Oh, wow. I would I would have been able I would have been able to do it, but I sold the Bitcoin. Yeah. So so Nelly, so so I go up again. Then the second time I go up, I strike out. Okay, now I'm 0 for 2. Third time I go up, I pop out again to the catcher, get tagged out again. So with that. Goose egg right now. Yeah, goose egg. It's horrible. My dad is, we get back on the team bus. We're back on the team bus, like literally going with my team back to the hotel, which is like a five-minute drive. My dad is on the bus with us. It is me, my father, Ricky Henderson, Ozzy Smith, and Andre Dawson sitting in the bus. Andre Dawson says, you know, to me, he goes, man, you had a rough day at the plate. Wow. And starts laughing. Andre and then Dawson. My dad turns around and says to Andre Dawson, Ricky Henderson, and Ozzie Smith, he goes, I'm embarrassed. The guy, he should take his, he goes, I'm his father. He goes, I'm embarrassed. I'm telling him he should burn that jersey. And Ricky Henderson says in the third person, because that's how Ricky talks, he goes, Ricky would burn that jersey too. <laughs> I swear to God. Then Ozzie. Ricky likes his chicken spicy. Sal, for the, for the entirety of this five-minute drive, which felt like 45 minutes, Ricky Henderson, Andre Dawson, Ozzie Smith, and my father are roasting abusing me, me roasting wow. me, making fun of me to the point where they were getting the laugh so high, they were killing with this. Ozzy Smith, my father, and Daryl Strawberry went out for coffee the next morning <laughs> in the I, because Ozzy Smith told Daryl Strawberry, who was also on my team but wasn't a part of this thing, how much fun they were having with. And I think to this day, my father and Ozzy Smith are still friends. <laughs> yeah, all for me going all for things. So the moral of the story is here, kids. Sometimes when you suck, good things happen. Wow, I mean that's some life when you're on your your DB. Yeah. Death bed. Death bed. Not to bring everything, man. But that's going to flash in. That moment will flash in from no, your No, it eyes. was great. It was one of those moments where I'm like, I'm so happy my dad and, 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 my, and my close friends were there to witness it because, I mean, it was like, it was, and then I forget about it. I mean, I saw things where it's like, I saw, I saw the former AL MVP at five o'clock in the morning, drunk off his face in the streets of Minneapolis, eating pizza. All-star game started in 10 more hours. He hit two home runs. So wow. it just shows like that people are like, like a David Wells like yeah, yeah like yeah. how good how good these athletes are yeah you know so that was that was probably one of the coolest moments of my life is 2014 to be involved with the major leagues but I mean literally Ricky Henderson was roasting me in the third person he said Ricky would burn the jersey he kept, and then he, he said to me he said Ricky would have kept his weight on his back foot Ricky noticed you didn't have your weight on your back foot wow I swear and then it was like great. Oh, man, we should talk about ourselves in the, in the third. Yeah, it was great. That's fun. Yeah. Fat Joe, one time, he was playing the Wave here on Staten Island. Okay. On Wave Street. It was called the Junkyard or the Wave. It was the Wave for many years. Okay. And he came to do a show, and it was like 93-ish. Right. And we went down, and it was like, I guess it was all ages night, unless I was 93. I wouldn't have been. No. 90, maybe it was more like 90. It was college. Maybe like 96. I don't know if I had a fake idea. It was 18, 21 to drink. Right. And I was in there. And um, the place was 
Pack to see he had like a bunch of hits at that time. Fat Joe right. was big, and he wasn't coming on. He wasn't coming on. He wasn't coming on. It was getting really late, and the people yeah. were getting restless. And then everyone was like, "Yo, what's going on?" Then someone from his camp came on. And he's like, "Hey, yo, Fat Joe has the flu. Okay, <laughs> he has the flu. He's not feeling well, but he's gonna come out right now for you. He he could not. He could have canceled tonight, but he's gonna come out and sing a song or two just for you guys. Okay, but he has the flu." So that's all he's doing, and we're leaving. And then everyone just starts booing and booing, right? <laughs> Could you imagine if that was 2021? I mean, they would evacuate the building. That would have been like a terrorist <laughs> threat to come out with the flu. Fat, Fat Joe has symptoms. <laughs> yes. So um, so everyone just starts booing, and, and, you know, it's like a lot of people there. Like, I'm just a kid there, but there's, like, people, like, yelling. And Fat Joe came out, and he's like, yo, I'm going to just, I, I'm not feeling well. I'm going to sing a couple of songs for you guys. I'm out of here, or rap, or whatever. And then everyone just starts booing, and then he doesn't take kindly to it. And he's like, yo, what are you, you're booing me? And then Fat Joe goes on a tear in his camp. I, I, I'm not sure if it was Fat Joe or he left or his camp. I forgot who said this, but they're like, yo, you know what? Call y'all. They're like, Staten Island will be nothing without the Wu-Tang Clan. You'll be nothing. I wouldn't even come through here. And then that got everyone nuts. And then right. people started screaming. Out, and then people just started throwing shit at the stage. And then they were like, F you, and they just dropped the mics, and they all left. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I wow. was there. You saw that? I watched it. I was on stage with Fat Joe at BB King's in 2015. It was actually the very first date I went on with Jasmine, who's my children's mother, my girlfriend. She that Our very first date was in 2000, I'm sorry, 2014 at BB King's. We took her to a Fat Joe concert. Mm -hmm. They're still doing the show. Fat Joe brought me up on stage, asked me to tell a couple of jokes. I was like, it's a bad... Oh, I swear, no, yeah, yeah. Fat Joe doesn't understand. Yeah, yeah, I said he doesn't understand. I, I was like Joe, 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 Joe. I was like, I was yeah. like such a bad idea. I was like, he's like, all right, well, just rock with me then. So we start dancing. He starts singing, lean back, and his shoe breaks. I swear <laughs> to God, his foot, his foot came he, out of the he heel of the shoe. He, he takes up his seat, goes, Yo, Chris, throw my shoe into the crowd. I, Jasmine may have footage of this. I threw Fat Joe's broken shoe into the crowd, and then me and me and her sat down and we ate and we ate um uh, uh Sabaro's pizza on the corner. Sure. Yeah, in uh, in the middle of Times Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but and ja and Jasmine was like everybody was drinking and Jasmine tried to get a picture with Fat Joe in the green room and like he was like busy he was like nah in time and she's like well you look like an Easter egg anyway and walked away I was like oh my god no I swear to God on, but dude. she didn't hear it he didn't hear it but she but she said that she's like you look like an Easter egg anyway motherfucker that escalated quickly yeah, well that's how Jasmine is that God, for, God for went good. home that night and we got and, and, and we impregnated and you she got say with me. Me. Uh, God forbid Fat Joe heard. Jazz call him an Easter egg. How would that have gone over? I don't know. What don't, would that have done to your job at off the bat? Probably not good. Probably wouldn't have went well. That's acting fast and loose with people who are a little bit in a, had a bigger position than you at the at the work in the workplace. Yeah. Well, it got Magic to calling Fat Joe an Easter, Easter egg. egg. To be to be fair, he was wearing a light blue powdered velour oh, he sweatsuit, was wearing pastels, which was so it wasn't so much about Fat Joe as it was about his color story. It was color story. It was he yeah. looked Eastery, but okay. yeah, fat shout out Fat Joe. I love Fat Joe. You look like an Easter egg is more just because he was wearing pastels, anybody not because. Not but awake. by the way, he's not even fat no, anymore. No, dude, he's skinny mini Joe. Right. Skinny mini Joe. Fat Joe, so great. I mean, one of the, truly like one of the most awesome guys. We talked fat about Joe. recently how I sat next to him at courtside of the Nick game. Yeah, it's great. With Matthew Broderick and Matthew Broderick's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was on the last episode. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> just shout out Tom. Or Brady. maybe it's on an episode you guys haven't heard yet. We don't know what Pimp's gonna do. We don't know. I honestly think we talked about this game at some point, but there's one or two eps in the pocket that we might have discussed. And by the way, if that ever happens, tell us it, about we'll it. Take it with a grain. Take it with a grain. Yeah. Listen, we appreciate you guys coming here. Every single Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, tell your friends, please, we need more babes. We, we need more babes. We never start this podcast with anything to talk about. We just sit down and we do, on the on on purpose, we go off the cuff. And sometimes I'm like, what are we going to talk about? And I don't think we changed topic. And I looked up and we're at an hour and five. We had a great time. And yeah, this is just Beautiful, how it baby. is. It's how it is. Listen, bubs, I mean, I love doing this with you. I Where can it. people see you outside? Hey, babe. Uh, SavileCanoComedy.com for all dates, which keep getting pushed because of the pandemic. Right. But I'll be there by a, 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 a I'll be by a theater near you soon. Yeah, theater. Yeah. I'll, I'm ChrisDComedy.com. Stand updates, same thing. Some get off the ground, some don't. It depends if they push it back at the Pandy Wandy. But I have a podcast every uh, Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, called Chrissy Chaos. So go uh, go check that out. My YouTube is Christy Comedy, and just check out. Taste buds are other yes. podcasts on the No Pressure Network. You it's a lot to. of fun. If you like this, you'll like that. Oh, come on. Uh, uh, don't be a fake.
Don't be a flake. Don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't hesitate to say, hey, babe.